It was week 11 of last season. Northwestern upset Iowa with the game-winning Dan Persa touchdown pass in the final 90 seconds. Unfortunately, Persa was injured on the play and out for the entire rest of the season. So what's his progress? Well, it was mid-November when the injury happened as he tore his Achilles tendon and had surgery. He started running again in early March. As of the spring practice, he's just been throwing on the side, doing some agility drills and lifting weights. The good news is, it looks like by June 1st, he's expected to be cleared for summer workouts. Of course, it does mean for the spring game, Pat Fitzgerald will not have Dan Persa, who looks very warm on the sidelines there in Evanston. Evan Watkins, play action. Nice throw there to Rashad Lawrence, right in line. We're tied at 15 now. Kane Coulter under center. Man, he looks small back there, doesn't he? Spinning out, scrambling, trying to avoid lots of pressure. Looks for Torian Duper. <laughs> nice catch. Pulls down a 15-yard grab. A little later, more from Coulter. He'll keep it, nothing open. He's running, and he's still running. 27 yards into the end zone. A little later on, some play action for Trevor Simeon. Simeon to Charles Brown. He's a good man. That's a touchdown pass. It's time for some football activities afterwards. Fitz likes to have fun. Kids got spinning, then got dizzy, and what's the best thing when you're dizzy? Eat hot dogs. Carol Lentz was in Evanston. Alongside head coach Pat Fitzgerald, and first of all, overall assessment about the team's performance today and in the offseason. Well, yeah, number one, we wanted to come out injury free. Uh, and I thought we did, it looked all right today when we came off the field. I thought we improved our all 15 practices. We want to take the fundamentals that we worked on for the first 14 and execute that today and look like we did. In the quarterback position, Dan on the sideline, three different guys rotating in. First of all, what's the status of Dan and how has he helped out with those three QBs? Dan will be full go by the time we get to Kenosha uh, in our two, uh, two a day camp. Uh, he's doing really, really well. He's been awesome. I mean, I think back to my time when I was hurt during spring practice and I wasn't a very good teammate. He's been an outstanding teammate. I'm really proud of him. And he's been there with him in the film room on the sideline. You can see him today signaling. He's just tried to be a coach in the field and, and done really well. Past three years, three bowl appearances. What's going to enable you to have that same performance at the end of the season? Well, number one, this next step. It's the most critical time for every college football team. Number one, academically, to finish the school year strong. Number two, to get in a weight room, train, improve our speed, our power, and come together as a football team with a chemistry and attitude like you do in the summer. And then last and probably most importantly, socially, to give back and continue to be involved, be men of character and do the right things and look after each other and have good, clean fun. All right, Coach, thanks for the time and best of luck next season. Thanks, go Cats. <laughs> Let's send it back to the studio. Those Cats, now members of the Legends division, bring back 17 starters. I hope Persa is as healthy as can be because he set the Big Ten record for completion percentage with 73.5% last year. Jeremy Ebert hopes to keep catching balls from Persa as Ebert led the conference in yards receiving.